Jesus himself in the book of John, John 4, 19 to 25, the woman said to him, listen, the way you are going to worship your God this year. The woman said to him, sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. He said, forget about the prophet. But I'm telling you the truth, what I know, the way you can serve your God. He said, I perceive. He said, don't perceive. I'm a teacher. Forget about it. Just pack aside prophets. Let's say the real thing. The woman was telling him, and what happened? In verse 5, he said, Our father, our fathers worship on this mountain. And you Jews says that in Jerusalem is the place where one ought to worship. Jesus said to her, Women or woman, believe me, the hour is come. The hour is what? That and it is. This is hour. He said, believe me, the hour is coming when you will neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem worship the Father. What he was saying is, not until when you go to the house of God, into the church that you can worship. Jesus was saying in your car, when you are driving, you can worship. When you are cooking in your kitchen, you can worship. In your own closest time, you can worship. When you are taking your shower, you can worship. You can worship God because he provides you water. You can worship God because he gives you the hand to, 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 to brush your body. You can worship God when you are in the toilet. That Lord, I thank you because I'm in the toilet. Some people cannot toilet in the morning. Jesus was telling the woman. He said, the hour is coming when you will neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem worship the Father. You and your husband can worship together. Even though when your husband is making love with you, you worship. Am I speaking? You worship God and Lord, I thank you, my husband is not an impotent. Clap for Jesus. You worship God and Lord, I thank you that my wife can perform. Amen? You worship God because your house is not destroyed. Praise God. Some husband, their wife is paralyzed. Some wife, their husband is impotent and they can't say it out. They are sweating. And it's paining them for them to share their love with another man. So you thank God in anything, in everything. Any condition you are, that's what God is, Jesus is telling the woman. Don't wait until Jerusalem. Who told you that you will reach Jerusalem before you worship? Am I speaking? Yes, verse 22. You worship what you do not know. We know what we worship. For salvation belongs to the worshippers. Deliverance belongs to the worshippers. Healing belongs to the worshippers. Breakthrough belongs to the worshippers. When you are the worship him, doors is open. David said, I will enter into his gate with thanksgiving. Into his court with Devil cannot tamper with a, a true worshipper. That is what the devil, devil hates. When you are a true worshipper, devil cannot tamper with you. Amen. Amen. Come. Let me tell you, when you are a true worshipper, and devil bring his, 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 his load, load of sickness, load of disease, load of trouble, load of worriness, the moment he comes to search for you, he will look at it that this one is a true worshipper. My luggage is not in him. He will carry the luggage back. Yeah. Am I speaking? Yes, but when Satan come and he find his luggage in you, you are worshiping God in hunger, in dirty heart, in gossip. Your heart is dirty. Your tongue is killing. How can you worship him? When Satan now come, 
and we find this luggage in you, then we begin to bombard you. The time you're supposed to worship, you're weak. The time you're supposed to worship, you are, you are facing one problem or another. The time you're supposed to worship, you are tired, you are weary. A worshiper is a victor. A worshiper will never seek. You are moody. You want to worship. It's not looking into your face. It's looking to your inner heart. Your heart is dead. You are keeping malice. And you say you want to worship him. You are deceiving yourself. I have a lot of things to say today. But because of time, I will save our time. But let me deal with this woman so you will know the way you are going to worship him today. Don't allow God to reject your praise and worship like Cain. But allow him to receive it as Abel. Go and sit down, sir. But the hour is coming. And now is when who? The true worshiper. Not in anger. Not in malice, not in moody, not in pride, not in pomposity. You want to worship God in your closet? Your phone is by your side. You are worshiping God and a phone ringing. Hello? I'm worshiping. When I worship finish, I call you. You are not a true worshiper. Am I speaking? You are not a true what? Don't you know that there's a time that when you worship, you don't know where you are? Something will be bubbling in your heart. Something will be working in your mind. How many of us, I tell them in the morning this morning, that in your dream, in the realm of the spirit, you're giving thanks to what you're worshiping God. And when you wake up, you are still thanking and worship. Who I'm, 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 I'm of you have, 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 have experienced that. How many of you have been praying? In the realm of the spirit, you pray in the dream. And when you wake up, you are still praying. Which means you fought the battle in the realm, you won the battle physical. With your prayer. A worshiper is a victor. A worshiper is a, is a deliverer. A worshiper, no one can put you in prison with your, with your worship. Jesus Christ said, the true worshiper and the true worshiper will worship the Father in the spirit. And in truth, for the Father seeks such for to worship him. This year, make yourself available. Turn to your neighbor. Say, neighbor. neighbor. I cannot hear you. Neighbor. Loud and clear. Neighbor. Make yourself available to worship God in any condition. John 4, 14. John 4, 14. The Bible says, the Bible says, but Whoever drink of this water that shall give him will never thirst him. But the water that I shall give him will become what? In him. A fountain of water springing into everlasting life. A true worshiper never anger. Never angry. Never moody. You can't be a worshiper and be, and be angry. Nobody makes you too angry. You are, you are hungry. You belong to the devil. You are worshiping devil, not God. A worshiper will be always smiling. A worshiper will never think evil in his heart. If anybody offended a worshiper, he will attack you with worship. Am I speaking to us? Let this year be the year of your worship that is acceptable by God. Praise God. You are worshiping God, you are pompous. You are worshiping God and they don't see it in your life. There must be a life changing in the life of worshipers. Worshipper does not talk nonsense. Are you listening to me? In your workplace, they don't know you as a worshiper. They know you as a cursor. You curse, 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 a pisha. Where you are not in Jesha? Amen. In Jesha, I'm sorry. <laughs> Amen. Are you in Jesha? That is injecia. That is injecia for you. Amen. Ondo is ada knife. Idare is betu betu. So they have it like that. But the worshiper will have only Jesus. Let's clap for him. Be a worshiper this year. 
Be a worshiper this year. Be someone that can thank God. Either is pleased or displeased. Either in trouble, either in worriness, either in any condition. Not only when God is answering your prayer, you can thank him. Thank him for the failure. Failure that you thank him for will bring your success. Am I speaking? That is 1 Corinthians 10 and verse 13. Thank him for that failure. Thank him that the sickness clicked to you. And thank him because he has taken away the sickness. Jesus Christ was thanking for Lazarus that have dead for four, four days. He said, Lord, I thank you. Because the dead is, this man is slept, not for dead. Praise God. Miracle that Jesus performed. Go and check it. It's th- just only thanksgiving. No deliverance, prayer. When he wanted to feed 5,000 people, he said, Lord, I thank you. Pray, Lord. Amen. Thanksgiving. 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 When he asked Solomon to ask for what he needed, Solomon did not went straight to what he needed. What Solomon did, he worshipped him. He thanked him for his father David that you continue with me. Then his head was swallowed up. He said, okay, what you not ask, I will give it to you because he given thanks. No temptation has overtaken you except such as common to man. But God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. But with this temptation will also make the way of what? So when you thank him for failure, that failure will bring success. Thank him because they rejected you in the home office. Those who reject you will approve you. Because you have given thanks. Thank him for your wife that is misbehaved. Because it will correct your wife. Am I speaking? Satan hits you, bam. And you allow him to take away thanksgiving away from your mouth. Don't you know that anything that Satan did to weaken you, the first thing that will take away from you is thanksgiving and worship. But don't allow it. I was telling them in the morning, in the, in the morning that if I tell you since 2015 up to date what I'm passing through, you, you, say me, I will worship God. Talk to me. What I'm passing through as a pastor, as a general overseer, as a servant of God, and I check myself that I had not offended him, I can boast that I had not offended God. I did not commit fornicator. I did not commit adultery. I did not steal. I did not spend church money anyhow. I did not do anything. So where did I offend him? Then I realized that I'm going through my text. The text will bring testimony. What you are passing through will make you to be strong. What you are passing through will make you to know that God is still with you. It is anyone that going through tough that no one help you. No helper. No destiny helper. No advisor. You are dead with that situation. Stand on your feet and begin to glorify him. Let's begin to glorify him. Let's begin to magnify his name. Just thank him this morning because you are alive. Let's thank him. Let's give him glory. Let's appreciate him. When we are giving thanks to him, when we are appreciating him, when we are worshiping him, we worship him is an act of praying. Homage, praying homage, which, which involves deep respect, reference, adoration, and show him sincere of love to a supreme being, the almighty God who created us must be worshippers for all for, for who he is he is and not because he need anything from us we are created to show the splendor of god by glorifying him since we are created for worship it is important that we find out way to do it so as to be accepted by him who commanded us to worship him. Just begin to worship him right now. Begin to give him glory. Begin to give him honor. Appreciate him. Appreciate him. Amen.